All right. Well, welcome back to the I Wealth Podcast. And uh, today we're talking about something that's a little bleak, but a uh, premature death and uh, with a minor beneficiary. You know, the kid is written on there as the beneficiary yeah. of that set of accounts. What happens in that type of scenario? Yeah. Well, first of all, um, my daughter didn't know what life insurance was. And it was brought up with some friends. And the friend says, Kendra, let me tell you something. Life insurance is when your dad dies and you hit the lottery. <laughs> so, <laughs> so anyway, she she learned she learned what a beneficiary was then. But um, no, on a, on a serious note, the, I do see this mistake over and over again. First of all, people don't have their documents done. They don't have a will, and they need it. You know, we we analyze our our clientele, and I think like thirty percent of them have their will done. And we encourage them to get in, and we don't do that work, but we encourage them to get in and see somebody get their will done. But, but here's what happens. If, well, I'll use myself in, as an example. If I have my beneficiaries as my wife and I have my two minor children as my contingent beneficiaries, and Trudy and I both died. Car, car wreck. Car, car wreck. We're both dead. Minor kids, let's say we each had a million dollar life insurance policy. So now it's $2 million of cash. When they get to be 18 years old, they're each going to get a million bucks to do whatever they want with. Okay. I don't think that's a recipe that's going to work very well. I know yeah, they, it they might beg to differ. Listen, I had uh, some money from a car accident when I was a kid and received, I learned to borrow against it at 17, and by, by 21, I was broke. Not so, good. so yeah, so I'm, I'm a walking testament of that not a good idea. <laughs> so what you can do, though, is you can set up in your will a trust provision that if you died and your kids were minors, what do you want to have happen with the money? So my, all my accounts has Trudy as my primary beneficiary. She gets everything I have or vice versa. But our primary is our last will and testament. And if we both were gone, now there are stipulations that are set up that they get a certain amount at, at 20, a certain amount at 25, a certain amount at 32. And the older I get, the farther I want to stretch it out, Matt because I get more conservative, I think. But I want to set my client's children up for success, meaning I don't want them to get taken advantage of by, I always call them in-laws or outlaws, you know, a spouse or something like that, or a cousin or a friend that preys on them because they got all this money when they're too young to really understand how that all works. And each child's a little bit different on their maturity with it. So the bottom line is your beneficiary should not be your minor kids. Your beneficiary should be your spouse, and then you need to go see an attorney and get your legal documents in order so that you can leave it to your will, and your will's going to outline who's going to take care of it. Yeah, because then it's kind of like an umbrella, right, that it can kind of be for all of your assets in the will instead of yeah. just your money. Yeah, and you can- Yeah, and then in the will, there's two. before you go see the attorney, there's two things that you need to think about. Number one, who's going to care for your children? Yep. Who's going to you know, wipe their nose and take care of their bloody knee? But who's going to take care of the money? And I think they should be two separate groups of people or trustees because I don't want the people that are caring for my children to have to say no to my children because they want a Corvette when they're 17 years old. Yeah. I want a different entity to say no and them to continue to love my child and take care of them. So before going into an attorney's office, I believe, an attorney's going to let them know, I believe they should have two sets of kind of guardians, one that's going to care for the child and one that's going to care for the money that's going to take care of the children at some point. So it's, uh, it's not complicated. It's hard emotionally to get on the same page with your spouse sometimes on who those people because should be. there's a be. lot of really big conversations that go along with it. It is. That probably won't end up happening, but if it ever comes to it, the fact that you've taken the time to think through it is right. so key Right. because it's all ishy stuff. Yeah. You're dealing in awkward waters the minute that you start to talk about yeah. this stuff. But why not get it out of the way while everybody's healthy? And you're not in a bad situation. Yeah, and making a situation worse, you know, as you go through the process. And think of an and think of like our practice. Seventy percent don't have it in our practice. And that's and even with somebody advising. Exactly. Them so so saying, think of the general. I don't know do. what the numbers are, general population, but most people don't have their planning done. And so we're talking about beneficiaries today and not making mistakes with your beneficiaries. But you really got to back into that by getting your legal documents in order. Very cool. All right. Well, if somebody has some questions about this, is it okay if they ring you up and sit down and do a little face-to-face time with you? You bet. we got a whole team at iWealth to help them. So. Very cool. We'll see you back here next time on the iWealth Podcast. Thanks, Matt.